Welcome to pre-calculus video for skill number six. I can use and apply the standard point slope and slope intercept form equations with lines and pairs of lines. Featured below we have a map of the world and the trivia question is two parts. First, what is the name of the projection used for the map? And the second part is what do the red dots represent or with a bonus question what are the red dots called alright we'll begin our notes on page 6a and probably in algebra 1 and algebra 2 we learn these forms but to review we have three forms the standard form the point slope form and the slope intercept form the first form is the one slope intercept form is perhaps the first one that we are introduced to the standard form has the form ax plus by equals c, and we need to keep a positive, and a, b, and c are integers. From this form, we can find the zeros in the y-intercept, but the most important piece, the slope, is found by saying negative a over b. The point-slope form, my personal favorite, is great because we can look at it, and it shows us the slope, and it also tells us a point it passes through and very commonly this is used, particularly when we start to get into calculus. So finally, the slope-intercept form tells us the slope and the y-intercept, which is a great form as well. So for this skill, we should be able to do some conversions. So I have shown in example one and two conversions. Example one, we are given a standard form and we're told to convert it to slope-intercept form. And so what we want to do is first we subtract 2x from both sides, and then second, we divide both sides by negative 5. Oops, slight typo there. Let's change that to negative 8 over 5. So we would have y equals 2 fifths x minus 8 fifths. All right, in example 2, we have a form of a line that is the slope-intercept form, and it's asking us to convert it to standard form. So we take our equation, and the first thing I do is I add, subtract 1 half x to the left-hand side of the equation. And then in order to make it standard, we need to multiply everything by negative 2. That makes all values, a, b, and c, integers, and it makes the value a positive, because there's a positive 1 right there. All right, we're getting into uh, example three here, which is a more realistic uh, example of how it'll be on the skill test. It says, find a slope-intercept equation for a line through 2, 5, and negative 3, 8. So because we have two points, we can use these two points to find the slope of our line, which is a good first step. And for those needing a refresher, we can find the slope by saying y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So I've demonstrated that here. y2 is 8, y1 is 5, and x2 is negative 3, and x1 is 2. When we do that out, we get negative 3 fifths. And then we can plug that into our point-slope equation because we now have a slope and we have a point. We could use either point. I used the first one. If we wanted to use the second one, we could say y minus 8 equals negative 3 fifths x plus 3 because it's x minus negative 3. Either point works, and we find that the final equation in slope-intercept form is negative 3 fifths x plus 5 equals y. The next part of the skill that we should be able to do is work with pairs of lines, and the most common pairs of lines will be parallel lines and perpendicular lines. We should make note that parallel lines have equal slopes, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. For example, if you had a slope of 3 
then the other one would have a slope of negative one-third, or if you had a slope of two-fifths, the negative reciprocal would be negative five-halves, etc. And we'll see that in the next example. Find the perpendicular slope to 2x minus 4y equals 8. So it looks like what we have is standard form here. And standard form, we can find the slope by saying negative a over b. And if you never remember this, just write it into slope-intercept form, and then you can get the slope off of that. So negative a over b gives us a slope of 1 half. So then the perpendicular slope of 1 half would be the negative reciprocal, which is negative 2. All right, in our final example, we work through a more challenging problem. It says, find the equation of a line through negative 2, comma, negative 5. That is perpendicular to y equals 2 thirds x minus 8. And write it in standard form. So, since our line 1 has an equation with a slope of 2 thirds, we could say that the perpendicular slope is negative 3 halves. Now we have the slope and a point that it passes through. So it would be good to use the point-slope equation. So if we plug in our values, negative 5 for y1, negative 3 halves for our perpendicular slope, and negative 2 for our x1. From there, it's a process of slowly building it to the standard form. So first I combine the negatives to make a plus. Then I distributed the negative 3 halves in. And then from there, I subtracted 5 from both sides. And here we have our slope-intercept form, but it asks us to find standard form. So if I move down the page, the first thing I did was I added 3 halves x to both sides. And this looks pretty close to standard form, except a is not an integer. So what I'm going to do is multiply everything by 2. And we have a standard form equation now. a is positive, and a, b, and c are all integers. This concludes the video. I can use and apply the standard point-slope and slope-intercept form equations with lines and pairs of lines. The map projection featured below is a Mercator projection, and the red dots called the Tissot's Indicatrix, are dots which represent equal land area. And this helps us understand the idea that area up here is not the same as area down here. In fact, Greenland, which looks very, very large, is actually one quarter the size of Africa. Thanks. One last thing to note, if you're interested in seeing more examples of the similar thing, check out Calculus Video 101.